Hello everyone, my name is Alex Roshan, and this is the story of my life and my battle with an anxiety disorder. My hope with this is that I'll be able to help anyone going through what I am by sharing my journey and healing process, and hopefully giving a name to a problem that some may not even know they have. So what better place to start than at the very beginning? I was born in Toronto, and right from the start I was different, I guess. According to my parents, I was a really peaceful baby and I didn't cry much after I was born. I was really enthusiastic about trains and specific movies like Fantasia and Star Wars when I was really young. Heck, I guess you could say I got easily fixated on things in general. I was an only child, and since both of my parents were at work all day, it meant a lot of my time was spent at daycare. This particular daycare wasn't the right environment to foster my social skills, as it turned out. Though I met a really good friend who I'd be in contact with for many years, most of my memories there were either of watching television in the basement or in timeouts for some reason, while the sitter passed off her kids' artwork as our own. Yeah, as you can see here, my art is still very basic. My social skills going into elementary school weren't the best, and since I was already a really emotional kid, it made group activities like sports uncomfortable for me. And I'm pretty sure for everyone else involved. I usually only had one or two friends to hang out with at recess time who I could really relate to as a result. Around grade one, I also became interested in playing video games and drawing, which were always a great source of escape and were sometimes social for me. Even today, I still love my games. I was generally a happy kid for the first few years of elementary school, but the fact that I was so sensitive led to problems for me. In particular, bad weather scared me a lot. There was a day where the clouds were dark and it was really windy outside, and I remember one of my friends saying he thought there would be a tornado. This suddenly made me think of all these awful possibilities, like what would happen if a storm wrecked my school or house? This was the first time that one of my fears became obsessive. I started checking weather forecasts by the day, and storms scared me more than ever. One night, I remember being too scared to sleep when the remnants of a hurricane blew in. As time went on, I found it a lot harder to adapt. It seemed like everyone's interests were growing up and changing, and there became less room for me to be, well, a geek. Since I found it difficult to connect with my classmates, it led to a few moments where I was emotionally bullied by a few of them. While I don't want to get into specifics, these times led me to develop some trust issues that carried on into high school. The bullying continued well into grade 9, and the prospect of gossip had me frightened. Though despite a bad start, my time improved as I met more like-minded people, some of whom I'm still friends with today. Among my favorite experiences in high school were some short films and even a school musical that my friends and I worked on together. This upswing continued into my first year of university, as despite having none of my school friends there with me, I had a great time with residence life and all the new connections that came with it. However, once that year was over, my next two years at university were some of the lowest points of my life. I found myself bored by what I was doing in school, and the thought that I was wasting my time in my program became common. Even worse, I had no idea what would be my ideal career path. It always felt like there was pressure on with me, and eventually I became irritable and increasingly difficult to be around. As I took my problems out on others, I realized this had to change. I began going to therapy in my second year of university, which proved helpful in removing some of the clutter from my head. But even by the time therapy started to help me, the constant unease I was feeling was getting worse. This led to me constantly dwelling on topics such as morality and my own mental state. Before my fourth year at university began, I'd lost almost three months of my summer to these obsessions. It got so bad that going outside became a lot more demanding, and familiar places like conventions felt threatening to the point where I even felt physically sick once. Then, just as I returned to school, my therapist referred me to a doctor on campus to determine what my problem was and how to solve it. A few days later, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I'd known my whole life that I was a lot more reactive in anxiety-provoking situations than most people I knew, and I'd definitely thought my problem was anxiety-based before. Despite that, it was still an incredible relief to finally have some kind of closure. As I discovered, mental illnesses such as anxiety disorders are more complex than simply being behavioral. There's often a biochemical component to how these disorders are created, wherein the reuptake of certain neurotransmitters that cause specific impulses is either overactive or underactive. In that sense, mental illness is a misleading term, because in a lot of ways it's akin to other genetic, physical illnesses like, say, cystic fibrosis. So, in that same appointment, I was prescribed medication to counterbalance the overproduction of the neurotransmitter called serotonin. 
Since taking my medication, my healing process has been slow, but noticeable. While I still feel periods of anxiety from time to time, they're never as extreme as they used to be. It took for me as many as six weeks to get some degree of results, and over that period of time, my dosage level has been increased three times. Though, whether it's due to my medication or not, I've found my intrusive thoughts a lot easier to challenge or ignore lately. Looking back, it makes sense to me that I've been battling anxiety for pretty much my whole life. While I may have it in some form forever, I have faith that I may even be able to turn my anxiety into something more positive. It's taken me a long time to get to this point, but it feels great knowing that I've basically been fighting my mind on a daily basis for the past few decades, and that I might finally come out on top. And with that, this concludes my story. If you or anyone that you know has anxiety, I hope that this video has been helpful to you in some way. Everyone deserves the best, and I urge you never to give up if you're suffering from any kind of mental illness. Thank you for watching.